Hey, this is Magda K and welcome to my channel. So in this video, I want to talk about how not to lose yourself in a relationship. So when you're single, you're this amazing, powerful person. You have your hobbies, you have your projects that you're working on, you're active, you take care of yourself, and then you get into a relationship and things change. You start letting go of your hobbies and your projects and you stop spending time with your friends. How did that happen? The problem with losing ourselves in a relationship is that it's a progressive thing, so we don't actually notice it until it's too late. And often we realize that we totally lost ourselves in a relationship when it ends and the breakup hits us so bad. Because that's one of the consequences of losing yourself in a relationship is that when you decide to end this relationship, you feel like you are missing a big chunk of yourself because you gave it away. You gave away your power. You became so dependent on the other person. And that's why moving on takes so much more time and is so much more painful. But see, the thing about losing yourself in a relationship is that often this is the very thing that breaks the relationship. When you start giving yourself away, what happens is that you drain yourself from life force energy, which makes you less happy and also makes you less attractive. Because see, that amazing person you were when you were single, that's the person they fell in love with. They feel inspired and amazed by everything that you do and create. So when you let go of those things, you actually become less attractive to your partner. And so oftentimes people lose beautiful relationships because they got lost in those relationships. So let's look at it. What can you do to help you stay in a relationship? Of course, spend time together with your beloved because you want to do it because it feels great without losing yourself in it. So number one is to slow down. So truth is, the quality of your relationship hugely depends on how you start it. So that's really common that when you meet another person, one of you may want to go faster than the other. So maybe the person you're into right now is like really into you. They're in love, they're obsessed with you, and they want to move really fast. Now, you may prefer to slow things down, but in the end, it's kind of cute and kind of awesome that the person is so into you, so you just go with this faster pace. So what happens often is that the partner may want to move in together when you don't really feel like this is just the right time and you give in because, oh, it's kind of cute that they want to live with me. Or even at the very beginning when you're dating and you go over to their place, and you're like, okay, I've had enough. I'd like to go home and stay home for the night. But then they're like, oh, please stay. I'd love to you know, spend the night together. Let's, let's stay in my place and you know, let's have breakfast. And you're like, oh, okay. So when we start doing these things at the very beginning of a relationship, we actually create a pattern of sacrificing ourselves. We create a pattern of ignoring our own no and our own boundaries because it's kind of cute that they're so into us. You start giving away your power, and this is how you become dependent on the person. So the most important thing in all of this is be mindful to take things slowly. Honor your own pace. Give yourself enough time to tune into this situation. How do you want to show up in this relationship? Is this the right person? Honor your own pace, and this way you're setting yourself up for success. Number two, and this is especially true if you live together, and it's to spend time apart. So when you start hanging out together a lot, what happens is that you start merging into one. This is why couples often have similar ideas, often feel similar things, think similar thoughts, and even after some time, you can observe that partners can physically look more alike. So this is why, because you merge on the level of the physical body, energy body, emotional body, and mental body. Now, it's beautiful, it creates deep intimacy and deep connection, and this feeling of oneness. 
However, that process means that it may be really difficult for you to actually understand what is your truth. So it will be very difficult to know, are the emotions that I'm feeling right now, are they my emotions or my partner's? Are these thoughts truly mine? Or am I just confusing my own thoughts with the thoughts of my partner? So this is why it's really important to separate yourself every now and then, clear the energy of your partner, be in your own space and check in with yourself. What is it that I feel? What is it that I want? What is it that I think? What is it that I believe in? So like I said, if you live together, my recommendation is that once a week you spend an evening by yourself. So either go out, rent a hotel room, stay with your friends, or ask your partner to go out. Like just give them a free night out, go with your girlfriends, with your boyfriends, and leave me alone in the house so that you can spend time with yourself. And another beautiful thing to do is once a month, go away for a weekend by yourself or with your friends but not with your partner. So this may be just one night, but this may be even longer if you can afford it with your other activities. Now, here's the thing. If you're someone whose love language is quality time, and if you really enjoy spending time together with your partner, this may feel really difficult to do. So what I want you to change is how you perceive that strategy. So it's not that uh, I'd love to actually spend time with my partner, but I can, I need to be away from you. Think of it as investment in your relationship. So yes, you may feel a certain level of anxiety, like separating yourself and spending time away from them. But what you're actually doing is taking care of your relationship. So you're doing this with the intention to strengthen your connection so you can stay together in love happy and passionate about each other for many, many years. Number three, get in the habit of checking in with yourself. What is it that you need? So when we get into a relationship, especially if you have tendency of losing yourself in it, we become extremely attuned to the needs of our partner. So we know what they feel, we know what they need, we're always there for them. And it's beautiful. However, what I would suggest is that you develop the same ability to be in tune with yourself and be taking care of your needs. So what happens often is that we start focusing so much on the partner and what it is that they need and we kind of forget about ourselves. So then when the relationship ends, we feel empty because we gave so much, but maybe we didn't receive enough because we were not taking care of our own needs. So this is super important that throughout the relationship, you constantly check in with yourself. So just close your eyes. You can place your hands on your heart and just ask yourself, what is it that I need right now? Do I need some space? Do I need a cuddle? Do I need to talk to my partner? Do I need to go and work out? Whatever it is, but you gotta get into the habit of doing that. And so when you're taking care of your needs throughout the relationship, you'll be able to stay more independent, also more satisfied and mad, so less needy. And look, if the relationship ends, if that's kind of the pace where you're going, you'll be so much better off going through this process. It won't be as painful because you will feel more whole even though you lost your partner. Number four, I want you to make a list of at least 20 things that you really like doing. So I'm talking about activities, places, and people that make you feel alive. Now look, when we're single, we're really good at doing this. Like we know what makes us feel happy and we do that. Now we get in a relationship and what happens is that we feel so amazing spending time with our beloved. Then we just kind of let go of all of the other activities because now we get that rush of dopamine when we are with our partner. But here's what happens as a consequence. First of all, you become fully dependent on this one channel of energy going into your life. And secondly, over time, when the honeymoon period ends and and dynamics change, this one channel will not be as satisfying. So it's really important to maintain this network or a matrix of different channels going into your body that feed you with excitement, life force, vitality. 
So you want to make this list because it's very easy for your mind to play games with you. So if you, for example, check in with yourself, like, have I been taking care of myself enough? The mind will say, of course. But if you have something written down, it's like you have a proof in front of yourself that possibly that's not the case. So I want you to be checking this list once a week and see exactly when is the last time that you did all of these activities. Now, when you may recognize that actually you haven't done almost anything from that list in about a month or two, that's an impulse for you. Okay, time to schedule some of those things. And now what's important about these activities is that you do them on your own or with your other friends, but not with your partner. Because remember, the reason for doing this list and these activities in the first place is so that you don't put all of the eggs in one basket, so that you're not fully dependent on your partner only. It's a great strategy. And by the way, while doing this list, you may also discover some interesting things about yourself. And the last idea, for most important people in your life, for your best friends, schedule fixed weekly dates. So this is something that I've been doing for a while with my best friends because I realized that I'm busy with my work and then when you add on my relationship, it would happen that a week passed, two weeks, three weeks, and I just didn't speak or meet with one of my best friends. So we decided to put fixed meetings now it's over Skype, but before they were in person to make sure that we connect, to make sure that we are taking care of our friendship. So when you do this, you kind of know for sure that it's going to happen. And these are sort of non-negotiables, meaning that once it's in the calendar, it stays in the calendar. You don't move it, you plan around it. So for example, you may want to go away with your partner or you may want to do something with them or just hang out with them. Like, well, no. Nope. I can be available for you after 12 because let's say in the morning I have a call or a meeting with my girlfriend. And so I find this really beautiful and very helpful to help me maintain other relationships outside of your intimate relationship. And you know, with some people, you may wanna have those meetings once a week, with other people every two weeks or maybe once a month. So it depends on the type of a relationship that you have. But look, there is a reason why everyone says, plan your things, schedule them, otherwise they will not get done. And I think it's awesome to implement the same strategy in our social life. So my love, these are five ideas what you can do to help you show up in a relationship as an independent person and enjoy spending time together without losing yourself in that connection. And through that, actually be able to enjoy healthy, passionate relationship for many, many years. So I hope that you enjoyed it and I would love to hear from you. Are you going to give it a try? Or which of these ideas you like the most and you're going to implement first? And darling, if you enjoy those tips and if you would like to get more ideas like this, if you'd like to work with me one-on-one -on -one and assist you in your intimate life, then check the link in the description of this video and you can book a free consultation with me. So we'll get to talk get to know each other and see if you want to work together and in what way specifically I could help you. So maybe you're in a relationship and you're going through some challenges that you need help with. Or maybe your challenge is to attract that ideal partner to your life. So I'm available to help you experience the exact type of intimate life and intimate relationship that you desire. So once again, check the link in the description of this video, book a consultation with me and let's talk. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll catch you soon.